Welcome back to The Pulse. I am David Harris, Jr. Well, friends, police burst into the camp at University of San Diego today, arresting 65 people. Of those, 25 were outside agitators, not even students. It turns out, in fact, that the vast number, the real majority of students, want nothing to do with these protests. A new survey shows that just 8% of college students have taken part in a pro or anti-Israel demonstration. And 81% of college students want universities to hold protesters accountable for destroying property and illegally occupy, occupying campus buildings. I think they just want to be left alone and be able to go to school. On top of that, only 13% of students said that the war in the Middle East was one of their top three most important issues. Ironically, that seems to be something that they have in common with Vice President Kamala Harris. Here's her reaction yesterday when reporters asked her about the potential ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. Madam Vice President, Hamas says it accepted a ceasefire deal. Hamas has accepted a ceasefire deal. Your reaction? What are your thoughts on Hamas accepting a ceasefire deal? Okay. Shrimp and grits? Really? And then you said it again? Shrimp and grits? You think people want to know what you're eating, Kamala? No. Uh, you know, I think that if she really had something to say of her own without talking points or cue cards or little three by five cards like they constantly feed Joe Biden, her commander in chief, she'd probably want to actually ask a, answer a question that has so much to do with a war that's just raging and everybody's talking about. But it doesn't seem like she's interested. And if American leaders and students both don't care too much or seem to care too much about Israel's war in Gaza, then who are all these masked freaks causing chaos on college campuses? That's what I want to know. Joining me now is the president of the Crime Prevention Research Center, John Lott Jr. John, let me ask you first, you saw that clip there of uh, Kamala Harris, the vice president of the United States, being asked a very simple question about something that's, I think, a big deal. You know, there's still over 100 hostages uh, that Hamas has. There's several Americans. I think it's the last number I saw was five or six Americans that are there. Uh, it seems to be something that's causing outrage on all these universities. And all she has to say is shrimp and grits. This is what I'm eating for lunch. What does that, uh, what does that say to you? <laughs> right. Well, I mean, it'd probably be better if she didn't say anything. It surely doesn't come across as serious. Obviously, a lot of lives are at stake. Uh, obviously, Israel's in a, a, a war for its existence. And, uh, you know, and we've been having all these riots uh, on college campuses across the country. So, I mean, it probably would have been better if she just smiled and waved rather than uh, telling us what she was eating. Yeah, I guess telling us what she was eating was just kind of a snide way to not say anything at all. Uh, but I agree with you. I don't think they really have anything to say. I think unless they're literally being told what to say, they don't have the gumption, the confidence, or the or the wherewithal, the fortitude to actually come up with their own thought on the matters of them on them by themselves. It's like they got to be told exactly what to say. So, what about all these college universities that are being just ransacked by paid agitators? We know Mayor Eric Adams came out and said that you know they arrested a whole lot of people that were not students that were paid, and they seem to find that there's a 40 year old millionaire that's not a college student that was actually funneling a lot of money into this, so the Soros uh, Foundations, uh, along with the Rockefellers and, and some Pritzker, some of these you know big mega billion, do billion dollar donors to the Democrat Party, they've been tied to some of these things right. as well. What is happening on these college campuses, and will we see it stop or will it get worse during the summer? Uh, well, I mean, I suppose during the summer things will cool down to some extent, maybe except for the Democratic National Convention, just because college campuses will be uh, out of, won't be in session. But I kind of wish somebody in the media would ask the Biden administration what they think about Soros giving the money. The last multiple uh, election cycles, Soros has been the largest donor to the Democratic Party, to Democratic candidates across the country. And just to say, do you disown him doing this? Are you saying, are you willing to go and say that it's wrong for him to be going and funding these riots at the different schools that are there? You know, places where Jewish students have been held hostage at UCLA or beaten up uh, and threatened, not being allowed to go to classes. You would think somebody, I mean, if, if it was reversed, if there was some big Republican donor who was funding riots that was going on, uh, who was the major funder for the Republican Party, you would think the press would be asking, are you going to return 
uh, that donor's money to him, saying that it's just not clean money in a sense. But there's no statements. Nobody in the press is asking uh, the White House or Democratic Senate congressional candidates to go and disown Soros, nor are they asking the head of the Democratic Party about that. Yeah, they don't seem to be asking because I don't think they want to give the money back. I think they want to keep getting the money that they're getting for their you know, po political slush funds, for their campaigns. They want, it's, it's literally like, you know, the, the, the age old story of selling your soul for fame or for power or for whatever. Here you've got, you know, George right. Soros. If, if, friends, if you haven't looked him up, it, it, he admittedly worked for Hitler when he was a teenager. He admitted it. He was on, I think it was a Nightline or, or, or uh, some, some show, I think, with maybe Diane Sawyer. This is going back 20 plus years ago, maybe 25 years ago. This is not a good guy. This is a guy that's made fortunes bankrupting countries. And here he's in the United States, lives in the United States, is funding uh, uh, district attorneys. He's, fu he's funding, uh, you name it. He's just trying to take over this country and I believe bring absolute destruction to it. Uh, well, I, I don't see anything positive with him. Uh, that's my take. What's your take on Soros? Right. Well, I mean, look in, uh, in Los Angeles, uh, where they did finally arrest the rioters at UCLA, uh, they didn't book them in jail. They took them downtown and gave them free breakfast and released them. And so I suppose that's new, not too surprising, given that the district attorney, Gaston, in Los Angeles uh, was supported heavily by George Soros. And so the irony is, is you have wow. a George Soros prosecutor refusing to prosecute and charge uh, rioters who are funded by George Soros. Uh, again, you would think that that would be something that, you know, uh, Gaston would be asked if he had a conflict there. You'd think that the White House or others would be going asked to go and criticize him. But look, Biden has refused to criticize these left-wing district attorneys across the country. I mean, one of the reasons why we've had uh, the bad crime problem uh, has been the fact that district attorneys in large cities have been refusing to prosecute violent criminals. And here, right now, we have college campuses which are not going to have commencement addresses uh, simply because yeah. of these riots. And, and one of the reasons why we've gotten to this stage is that these rioters haven't been punished. They haven't really faced any consequences. If they were arrested and charged, uh, if there were severe consequences for the damage that they've done to school property, uh, my guess is uh, they would be more reticent to go and threaten commencement addresses and schools wouldn't feel the need to go and cancel them. Yeah, it seems like it is the the whiny, snotty, bratty child that was never disciplined, and that's why they scream and shout and then get what they want, and then they grow up to basically do the same thing. They're just adults, and you're exactly right. If there's no punishment, then was there really a crime? And that's what they're thinking, and they keep getting away with it. John Lott Jr., thank you so much for joining me this evening, brother. I really appreciate your insights. Thanks for having me on.